The member for South West Coast. I rise to speak on the Marine and Coastal Bill, which will have clear implications on my electorate, given my southern border is entirely coastline. This bill will, will provide for in integrated and coordinated planning and management of the marine and coastal environment of Victoria. Abolish regional coastal boards, replace the Victorian Coastal Council with the Marine and Coastal Council, and among other things, provide for the formation of regional and strategic partnerships, or RASPs, to address regional uh, is and issue-based marine and coastal planning. This bill is very important to my electorate, which, as I mentioned earlier, is bordered on the south by the Southern Ocean. The coast is a key part of, of life in my electorate, with people enjoying fishing, surfing, swimming, and walking on the kilometres of often wild coastline. The coast is also a key component for industry and tourism in my electorate. Obviously, the Port of Portland is a key economic driver, not only for the southwest coast, but for the entire state, being the largest exporter of wood chips anywhere in the world and injecting millions of dollars into the state's economy. Portland also has a thriving seafood industry and is a haven for recreational fishermen who are chasing southern bluefin <laughs> tuna. That's correct, the fisherman before me knows this. Um, then there is a beautiful, the, the beautiful Cape Bridgewater, which I think has the best beach in Victoria, if not in Australia, with its white sand and si sandy shores and vibrant blue water. Port Ferry is also focused around the coast with its key tourist destination and I know many members in this and other places enjoy visiting the beautiful beaches and surrounds of the beautiful little village. There is also a strong commercial fish, fishing industry in Port Ferry and it is too, pop, it is too popular with rec recreational fishermen. Warrnambool relies heavily on the coastal position for tourism and other industries as well. A major drawcard in Warrnambool and, and right along the southwest coast and is the annual migration of the southern white rails to, whales to carve during the winter months, which brings tourists from around the globe to our town. The movie Oddball was also inspired by, by an innovative, innovative program that uses mar marama dogs, sheep dogs, to protect the penguins on the rocky island just a few hundred metres offshore a successful conservation program which is run mostly by volunteers and is now being used to promote the region to a huge audience. I was thrilled to have the Shadow Minister for Tourism, Heidi Victoria, in my electorate earlier this year where she got the chance to see firsthand how this program works and how it's attracting visitors to the town. And of course, South West Coast and Polworth are closely aligned with the Great Ocean Road, linking our two regions and providing enormous opportunity for a strong economic boost with the booming Asian tourism market who come here and see the wild, rugged and untouched coastline. There is also a rich indigenous heritage element to the coastline, with one area in Warrnambool where the Hopkins River meets the ocean being of particular significance. The area is known as Moyle, and archaeological work over recent decades has revealed a lengthy history of Aboriginal activity. It dates to at least 40,000 years ago, and new dating techniques are suggesting the use of this site could well extend beyond this time. The evidence within Moyle could actually rewrite our understanding of how humans uh, colonised the globe. So it's clear the coast is vitally important to my electorate and to the state, and there needs to be a coordinated approach to ensure it's managed sensitively and productively. These changes proposed in this bill aim to streamline the coordination and planning of the marine and coastal environment, something which should be favourably given the confusion that we have seen that has been caused in this space. I note that during the coalition's consultation, the executive director of sea the Seafood Industry Victoria, Jonathan Davey, raised concerns the legislation removes the ability to plan for recreational fishing, and there is no objective in the bill that allows specifically for the continuation, development and promotion of fishing opportunities in Victoria, which is of significant concern. Mr Davies raised concerns this new legislation removes the ability to plan and manage for commercial use, literally locking things up. This is not acceptable and appears to be acting contrary to the Fisheries Act of 1995. I would ask the Minister to address these concerns, particularly given the importance of commercial fishing industry to my electorate, and I expect a comment from the member in front of me. No, fishing's not. <laughs> um, I, also have, I also have concerns about locking up public land in the broader sense. 
there is a debate in my electorate around the use of the Belfast Coastal Reserve and the plan to introduce a conservation zone east between Killarney and Warrnambool. In this zone, walking dogs, dog walking and recreational horse riding would be banned, but passive recreation like walking, fishing, surfing would be allowed to continue with rationalised access points. I'm not sure if this is the path we need to go down. I don't see an issue with dogs being walked on leashes and recreational horse riders on designated pathways. We should manage situations, not lock things away. There is the ability to get the balance right between human interaction, recreational activity and positive environmental outcomes. And is my feeling um, is that it, this part of the Belfast Coastal Reserve Master Plan does not attempt to find that. Sometimes locking things up can actually leave the environment more unmanaged and there are certainly unintended consequences that come from that. As agriculturalists, we have learned over the years to get the balance right between the land and productivity. And that's by managing inputs and outputs and monitoring and evaluating and constantly prioritising and ensuring that balance. So we can do the same for the environment and the, and the coast and get that, in, that balance right. The legislation before us proposes regional and strategic partnerships, or RASPs, that would support government departments and agencies, community organisations and industries to jointly address significant regional or industry-based planning that crosses judicial boundaries. This would allow the community to have some say in the future planning of the land they regularly use in my electorate and issue the RASP would have dealt with would have been around the Belfast Coastal Reserve and the issue that has have presented in relation and the issues that have presented in relation to training of racehorses on local beaches. This could have saved a lot of headaches for the various people involved having one central place to go and raise their issues and ideas and worked collectively as a team to find that balance I talk so passionately about. Overall, the proposed legislation improves coordination among stakeholders and government on health, the health and management of the marine coastal environment. I do note there have been concerns raised and I would ask the Minister to address them as a matter of priority.